Good morning all, this is uh, Dr. Anthony Rodriguez. I'm looking at uh, the plan of the island of Trinidad and Tobago. Well, not actually, the plan of Tobago. This map is dated approximately um, 1776. 1776. And as well, um, it was the chief surveyor, um, probably for the crown. Uh, the map depicts uh, boundaries and spaces showing the um, the division of how uh, Tobago was broken up into lots and plots on behalf of the colonists at the time. So if I blow up the map, you can get a closer look at these plots of lands. You can see if we can come down from Scarborough, which would be in the it's out. This should be in the southwest corner. Is the island? You see the angle. The island runs north is at the top, south, and then we have, of course, east and west. So this puts Scarborough in the south, more like a south southwesterly area. This vicinity, and the island trails is that way. Now the map is broken up into pieces. I'm going to blow it up so you can see it. As you can see, the every lot that's numbered was basically parcels of land allocated to some plantation and how the property was sold off except of course where you see the map where it shows you poor settlers poor settlers poor settlers those areas were not seeded out to any plantation so those were more than likely areas where poor settlers mean in white colonists and couldn't be free black people could have lived in these areas uh, poor settlers as you can see there are areas of poor settlers all through the um, the entire island now as you go more to a easterly direction and north in the island you see less spaces for poor settlers and I guess that is because they were um, in the entry at least maybe more plantation I'm unsure of why just the same you can see areas you recognize black rock stonehaven Cortland. there's plymouth right here um uh, not very many poor settlers but the coastline was not sold off by the english or any or deed out in any way the coastline was retained by the the colonizing government and if we come back to this side of the island again we see um hillsborough georgetown and of always you see poor settlers areas and there's Scarborough this is calling Scarborough here but as we know yes yeah, Scarborough is right here there's poor settlers again poor settlers several poor settlers areas right through here and as we continue looking at the map we see some things that those of you who are from Tobago should recognize and these lines here are depicting rivers that are basically traversing the island. So one will expect the high points are up here and the river descends down to the ocean. Um, there's Hillborough River here, next same name, Hillborough River. There's a Cortland Bay River that kind of runs north south, I mean east west through the island. Um, this is probably a ridge that's going across the island this way. Let's blow this up. Um, now these things that look like small people, I think those are symbols to mean there were inhabitants. Now let's see if we can find a legend on this map. Again, the chief survey. Now it says by John Bice Chief Survey in 1776. So this is a plot of the island from 1776. Let's see if we can find a legend that tells us about those symbols on the map. Okay, to the Honorable, let's read this piece here. It says, to the Honorable, the commissioners for the sale of lands in the island of Grenada, the Grenadines and Vincent Dominique and Tobago. Now, interesting to note, Tobago was part of the entire area which was considered Grenada um, from the colonist standpoint. The plan represents the figure of the island of Tobago, 
which in obedience to your instructions I have laid down by actual survey and described thereon the boundaries of all the lands sold, appropriated, or otherwise disposed of by your board. The spaces on the plan left unnumbered, excepting those allotted to poor settlers, as marked thereon, represents the lands remaining to the crown, which is still undisposed of. So basically, as of this time, it seems the land was all disposed of or they were disposed of at least by decree or by number. It is not necessary that each numbered space was sold, although this service seems to imply that. So it could be maybe a few persons bought up most of those um, estates. We'll find out more later. Um, then it goes on to say, we his Majesty's commissioners for the sale and disposal of lands in the new Cedar Islands do hereby certify the spaces in this plan left and numbered excepting those allotted to the poor settlers as marked thereon represent the lands remaining by to the crown which are still undisposed of the greatest part being very mountainous and uncultivable. The three chains round the coast represented by a dotted line are considered by us as appropriated to the use of the contiguous planter. Okay, so that's indicating even though the land was not disposed of around the coast, the contiguous lands were considered that for their use, but not their ownership, except in cases where any particular spots may hereafter be found necessary for erecting forts or batteries in which case his majesty may erect such force or batteries thereon without paying any compensation for the same okay so in essence they created some sort of a reverter clause so if you look at these like little dotted lines here in essence it says that the crown has use of those but the persons who like number 21 i'll try to track this down and see if i can get a decree title tell me who these numbers are aligned to because if the survey did the survey more than likely there's a record that will provide me names and, and persons who might have been the original seated owners now let's look at this part the title of the map to william he would esquire his majesty's sole commissioner for just and settling the differences and disputes so again we know that there were potential disputes and problems of land divisions and sales at the very inception which have arisen or may arise with respect to the sale of lands in the sea islands and to the proprietors in general of lands in the island of Tobago. This plan is most respectfully inscribed by their most obedient humble servant John Briars. Okay so these are the the um, geographic ge um, degrees of the island location let's see if there's anything else on this here published November the 1st 1776 um, scale of change 22 yards each so each chain is equal to 22 yards so that's um, 66 feet in every chain okay so scale of British statue miles 69 and a half nearly to a degree so i guess each space between each um degrees is approximately 70 miles sunken rock at the water edge now there is i have seen a next map so i have to find that one that gave me a legend describing these um insignias like for instance i think this will tell you Booker reef at that time was relatively marshy land there's a lagoon these are topographies I guess um, from this survey let's see if there's anything else on this map tells us anything that we may be of interest to us okay shifters north arrow okay I'm not seeing anything on this particular map but as I said this map is um is at the John Brown Library at Brown University. I will make a connection with the Brown University and see if there's any additional information on this 
map because since based on what the survey has indicated there's a adjoining document to this map that should tell us or give us more information okay my good people this is just a a first of a look at the island of Tobago and our work in trying to identify our various connections using as our foundational point the Romeos thank you very much for taking the time to join in